on the sparrow. Say, 
carry me, Jesus. Carry me home. Bless the blessed Lord, I've done my best. You do the rest and carry me home. He said, carry me, Jesus. Service was over. He was the last one to leave. He walked to his car in the dark and took out his key. His old rugged Bible in the seat by his side. Prayed out to He said, carry me, Jesus. sufficient and it'll never run out. Amen. 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 And so uh, Isaiah chapter number 12, we'll pick up reading verse number one. We'll read the entire chapter, just six verses. Uh, there's a, a, a brother friend, a friend of mine had me come up and preach one time in his absence and I preached a whole chapter out of Psalm and uh, I know I can talk fast and I thought I could squeeze uh, that entire chapter in and uh, uh, needless to say, I got labeled Brother Pharaoh. Uh, when I went back up there to, to preach again, they said, we got Brother Pharaoh with us. And I just kind of looked at him and he said, well, the last time he was here, you wouldn't let God's people go. And so they officially <laughs> named you Brother Pharaoh. And so uh, uh, thankfully, my record at that church has been broken. Thank the Lord for that. And I've been relieved of that name and that title. Amen. <laughs> and so don't get nervous. Only six verses in, uh, in this chapter, but uh, a lot of good information here. Uh, for us to glean from that will help us in our daily walk with the Lord. 
And there are five, uh, five ways that we can drink from that living water this morning. And Isaiah, Isaiah expounds on this and gives us some insight, and we'll look at that this morning. So Isaiah chapter 12, verse number 1, the Word of God declares it to us this morning. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thy anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord. Call upon His name. Declare His doings among the people. Make mention that His name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for He hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is thy Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the Scriptures this morning. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this day that you've made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we're thankful for the very breath of life you give us uh, to enjoy creation and have the health to be in your house, to come together as a body of believers to worship thee in spirit and truth. And Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, uh, we're thankful for your word and for the instruction and truth that we receive from thy word. And Father, we are thankful for that living water, dear Lord, that uh, the believers can partake of, Heavenly Father, that is in Jesus Christ. And Father, may our cups be full, may our cups be overflowing this morning of that living water. And Lord, I pray this morning that you give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach with clarity of thought and clarity of speech and to preach the truth in love. And Father, I pray that all of us here this morning would open up our ears and our hearts to the preaching of thy word, that we'd be closer drawn to thee. And Heavenly Father, if there is one here this morning that does not know Thee as Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray that You convict their heart of sin and of judgment to come and that You draw them to Yourself and that they would come forward this morning and be saved before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank You and praise You for what You've done. We thank You and praise You for what You're going to do because we ask these things in the, in the name that's above every name. For it's in Christ's name we do ask and pray these things. And Amen. Amen. Notice here verse number 1, the Word of God tells us that that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Uh, beloved, there's nothing wrong with praising the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He is worthy of our praise, and His name is uh, 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 worthy to be praised, and we should praise the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, and in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, Thy anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. And beloved, that's a result of salvation. The Bible tells us that the Lord is angry with the wicked every day. But we're thankful this morning and rejoice and thank God that His love exceeds His anger, and He's demonstrated His love toward us, and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, beloved, I get so distraught and upset, uh, especially when I hear a child of God make this statement, uh, the Lord doesn't care about me. The Lord doesn't love me. Let me tell you something. God loves you Amen. with an agape type of love. Amen. He loves you more than anybody on this earth will ever love you. Amen. He loves you with an eternal love. Praise be to God. Amen. And for our lost people, I, uh, let me tell you something. The lost people, I can understand them saying this because their eyes are blinded to the truth of the gospel message. And they're blind to the love of God. But God loves them. And He extends His love to them. That if they'll repent and turn to Him for salvation, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, and they can be saved. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. That if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him to, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. All those that come to the Lord, he will in no wise Amen. cast out. Amen. And so, beloved, this morning we ought to be thankful for salvation. Yeah. And in uh, one point in time that the wrath of God and the judgment of God Amen. and the anger and condemnation of God Amen. abode upon you and I in our lost condition. But glory to God, when you got saved, the wrath, the judgment, the condemnation, the anger was turned away. And now the mercy, the long suffering, the forgiveness, and the grace of God abides upon you and I as a child of God. 
That's when we shout about him about this morning. Amen. 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 And so, notice here in verse number two, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. Now let me tell you something. There's not many ways to be saved. There's only one way to be saved. And that's through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. John 14, 6, uh, the Word of God tells us He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. The only way that you'll ever get into heaven is through Jesus Christ and putting your faith and trust in what He did on the cross of Calvary. Glory to God. Amen. And so don't they, let me tell you something, don't, don't trust in, in church membership. Don't trust in the baptismal waters. Don't trust in your own righteousness or your good works. Because if you do that, you're building your life and building a trusting eternity upon sinking sand. It's going to crumble. But I'll tell you why. When you put your faith upon that spiritual rock, that solid rock, Jesus Christ, it's a sure foundation and an eternal foundation. Glory to God. And so uh, I had somebody come and say, yeah, preacher, you preached one time and, and you saved me. Let me tell you something. If I saved you, you still lost at 4 o'clock. Right. I can't save anybody. Right. Jesus Christ is the one that does the saving. Amen. Amen. He and He alone. Amen. Yes. And notice here in verse number 3. Therefore with joy. And beloved God's people ought to be the most happy, joyful people upon the planet this morning. Too many Christians walking around with a, a discouraging look and with a frown on their face. And I understand that we're going to have bad days. The Word of God declares that. Man born of woman is few days and full of trouble. We're all going to have heartache. We're all going to grieve. We're all going to suffer storms and tribulations. But bless God that when we go through storms, when we go through grief, when we go through heartache, as a child of God, we don't go through it alone. He is with us. He has promised us as a child of God that He never leaves us nor forsake us. That we will not fear any evil. Why? For Thou art with me. And glory to God that no matter what we go through in life, we can have joy because his presence is always with us. Glory to God. Aren't you thankful for the comfort of this morning in the form yeah. of the Holy Ghost and uh, that seals us until the day of redemption? Now listen, uh, there, there are times that I'll, I'll be honest with you, in the flesh, I'm not happy. But beloved, I can have, still have joy in my soul because I know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. You know, uh, 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 when all this first started about uh, purchasing Dad's home, uh, let me tell you something, but that was not anything on the to-do list. That was not anything on the venue uh, to, uh, to do in life. Uh, I had retired at the first of the year, and in Dad's health uh, had gotten worse about that time, and the Lord worked it out that uh, uh, my sister uh, was retired, and then I was retired, and she and I could, could platoon and try to help take care of Dad, and Christy and JB as well, and Haley and David, and Desiree, and Richie, and others. Everybody pitched in and helped out when they could and where they could. And let me tell you something, I don't regret that. I wouldn't change that one bit. Thankful that I could do that Amen. for my father. Uh, beloved, I'll tell you though, when he passed away, uh, we were just going to sell his house and uh, Carol was going to stay where she was at and we was going to stay where we was at. Of course, didn't have to go far. All, of, all that separates our property from dad's property is a fence. And so anyway, uh, uh, with that being said, uh, uh, Carolyn, uh, she and I worked it out and I uh, purchased her half out. And so now uh, we've been working on uh, dad's house. And let me tell you something, when all this started, I'm like, what on earth have we, have we gotten ourselves into? Uh, is, this, is this the will of God for us? And I'm like, we've missed the mark bad. Uh, my wife will tell you, uh, each night before we get started, I just don't think this is God's will. I don't know if we ought to do this or not and everything. And I'll tell you, the dread just kept mounting and mounting and mounting. And there was no light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, 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 I told Christy, uh, or Christy told me, she said, look, because of the cancer and your health now, you're not going to do this, you're not going to do that, you're not going to do this. And I'm like, well, who are we going to get to do all these things? Well, we'll hire somebody. We'll get somebody to do this. And as time has went by, it's been like it's been like Eureka, you know, uh, or shot back. I've just got drawn in to this vortex of having to do this, that, and the other. And I'll be honest with you. In the beginning, I had a bitter spirit about my 
my, my soul about having to do these things because this is not what I retired for. I just lost my father and now I'm out here doing these things that I'm trying to get away from that I'm not able to do anymore. And I'll tell you what, the Lord tapped me on the shoulder one day and said, I'm tired of you complaining. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of hearing you murmur and complain. You ought to be thankful for the health I've given you. You're still able to walk. You're still able to breathe. You're still able to function. Quit you complaining. Quit you murmuring. And rejoice and praise my name for what I have given you. And beloved, ever since that day, I've had a whole new attitude. And guess what? There's light now at the end of the tunnel. Praise be to God. Uh, glory to His name. Amen. Yes, glory to His name. Yes, I'll start preaching here in a minute. Uh, <laughs> anyway, notice here in verse number 4. In verses 4 and 5, there are five things that we can do as a child of God to draw out water, living water from Jesus Christ. And notice here uh, in verse number 4, and in that day shall you say, or verse number 3, excuse me, therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. And notice verse number 4, it's coupled with verse number 3 because of the word and. And notice here, and in that day shall you say, praise the Lord. Amen. One way that you can draw living water is praising Amen. the name of Jesus Christ. Giving Him the praise that is worthy of His name. Amen. Now listen, there's a lot of people that uh, when you hear them talk and when you hear them testify, they'll say, Preacher, I've done this. Preacher, I've done that. I've worked three jobs. I've been working ever since I was eight years old. And I've done this and I've done that. Hey, I appreciate your work ethic. I appreciate that testimony. I appreciate uh, uh, your diligence. The Bible says if you don't work, you ought not to eat. Amen. And so, beloved, I appreciate that. But the only reason that you're able to work the only reason that you're able to labor and the reason that you've been given an increase has come from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's come from Jesus Christ. He's allowed you to have these things. He's blessed you by His grace and His mercy with these things. He gets the honor. He gets the glory. Amen. And beloved, this morning we ought to praise His name. We ought to be thankful for the clothes on our back, the shoes on our feet, the health that we do have, for the earthly home that God's given us, uh, for the vehicle that God's given us, for the food that He's given us, for the food that's in the pantry, for living in such a blessed nation as America, and for the freedoms and the liberties that we still have. And we ought to be thankful that He loved us so much that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ to die on the cross of Calvary. Hey, we ought to be praising His name this morning. Amen. We ought to praise His name. Yeah, I've had people. I've had people ever look at look at me and say, "Preacher, I don't have anything to be thankful for. I just want to smack them." So you just didn't say that, did you? <laughs> uh, we all have something to thank the Lord and praise the Lord for this morning. Amen. Yes, sir. Psalm chapter twenty-two, verse number twenty-six tells us. And beloved, I'm just going to give you a few verses, but from cover to cover in God's Word, it's all about praising the name of Jesus. It's all about Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. And notice here in Psalm chapter 22, verse number 26, the Word of God tells us, The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek Him. Your heart shall live forever. Psalm chapter 30, verse number 12 tells us, To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee, and not be silent. That's what's wrong with God's people today. We're too silent. We're worried about offending people. We're worried about making people mad. We're worried about suffering persecution. Hey, just praise the name of Jesus. Glorify His name. Give Him the honor and glory that's due His name. Uh, oh Lord my God, I will give thanks unto Thee forever. I believe when we get to heaven, the Bible says that they'll be shouting, they'll be praising We'll be bowed down, casting crowns at His feet because worthy is the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Hey, let me tell you something. You're going to praise God in heaven and you're going to do it for eternity. Why don't you go ahead and get started now? Amen. Amen. Get some practice in now and do it now because He's worthy now to be praised. Amen. Amen. Psalm chapter 106, verse number 1 tells us, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for He is good. For his mercy endureth forever. And then Psalm chapter 109, verse number 30 tells us, I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Amen. Hey, won't you tell others what 
great things the Lord hath done for you. Yeah. And praise His blessed name. I will praise Him among the multitude. Hey, yes, it's one thing to praise Him when you're in the shower, getting cleaned up, getting ready for work, or you know, retiring to go to uh, bed and rest for the evening. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. But how about praise His name in the multitude? Amen. Yeah. I believe that's one reason why every service I give you an opportunity to praise the name of Jesus Christ because He's worthy of it this morning. Glory to God. Amen. I stand before the Lord in eternity at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. Nobody going to say, well, preacher never allowed me to testify. Didn't allow me to, uh, to, to glorify thy name. Let me tell you something. That blood's going to be off my hands anyway. Amen. That's going to come back on you. God's Amen. give you a mouth. Use it. Amen. Uh, too many times we use it for the wrong things, do we not? We ought to glorify His name. Amen. Well, notice the second thing, the uh, second way here that we can uh, uh, draw living water here in verse number four. In that day shall you say, first of all, praise the Lord. Second, Call upon his name. Now listen, I tell you, I appreciate when people call me to uh, to check on me and see my health is how my health is doing and how the family's doing. And I appreciate those that confided in me and trusted me enough to call uh, to get spiritual direction, to get spiritual counsel, to get spiritual advice. I appreciate that very much. Uh, beloved, when people call and say, Preacher, what should I do about this and what I should do about that? And let me tell you something. We all have opinions. Amen. We all have opinions. But when it comes to counseling somebody as a man of God, I want to try to give them the Word of God and what thus saith the Lord has Amen. to say about it. Amen. I want to give them good counsel. This is what God has to say about this. Amen. And this is what you should do. Not according to my words, but according to the Word. Amen. What God has to say about it. Amen. Yes. Uh, but beloved, uh, we need to call upon the name of the Lord. Uh, I know everybody knows Rome, Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, yes, we know that in reference uh, to salvation. But we ought to call up His name for praise and for prayer. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, the first time that we see in the Word of God recorded that men begin to call upon the name of the Lord, you'll find that in Genesis chapter 4, verse number 26. And beloved, all throughout the remainder of Scripture, you find men and women calling upon the name of the Lord. And beloved, this morning, whatever needs you may have, whatever distress you're going through, whatever trial you're fighting, why don't you call upon the Lord? Amen. Now listen, you can call upon other men and God uses uh, 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 other people uh, to accomplish His will. Uh, but beloved, sometimes the only help that you are going to be able to receive and the only one that's going to be able to help you is to call upon the Lord. Amen. Because with Him, all things are possible. Right. There's nothing too hard yeah. for the Lord. The Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 18, verse number 3, I will call upon the Lord, and I notice this, who is worthy to be praised. Notice how all this ties together. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Uh, beloved, we have a real spiritual enemy, the devil, as a warring lion that walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Uh, beloved, he cannot get your soul in regard to salvation, but he wants to destroy your testimony. He wants to rob you of your joy. He wants to hinder you from being a light and being salt of the earth and to tell somebody else about Jesus Christ. Uh, beloved, don't fight the devil alone. Call upon the Lord and let the Lord intervene and step in and fight for you and strengthen you through His Word and through His Spirit and put on the armor of God and fight the good fight of faith. Amen. 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 Uh, beloved, uh, call upon the Lord. The Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 145, verse number 18, the Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon Him, to all that call upon Him in truth. Now, beloved, I guarantee you there's a lot of other translations out there that don't have in truth included in that because there are people today that don't want to hear the truth of God's Word. Uh, that's why there's so many watered-down versions of the Bible out there today. I'll just say it that way. Uh, but beloved, let me tell you something. Call upon Him in truth, in sincerity, uh, in honesty. The Bible says the Lord is nigh to them. He's close by. You know, there are times when people call on me and say, Preacher, can you help me? Sometimes I'm two counties away. Sometimes I'm out of state. And I'm not able to help. Uh, but the Lord 
is always present with the believer. He's always close by. He is always nigh to them Amen. that put their faith and trust in Him. Yeah. I think about Peter when he got off that boat by faith. Lord, if it's you, bid me come unto you. Yeah. Peter, come on. Right. And Peter stepped off that boat by faith. Yeah. And he's the only other human being or the only other uh, one to ever walk on water besides Jesus Christ. And he walked on water by faith. Yeah. But something happened to Peter when he was walking toward the Lord. He saw the waves. Yeah. He saw the clouds. Yeah. He saw the storm. Yeah. He took his eyes off Jesus. Amen. And when he took his eyes off the Lord, what happened to Peter? Yeah. He began to sing. We all know the story. Yeah. But there's an interesting thing. We usually stop right there. But that's not the end of the story. As Peter was sinking, yeah. Lord, yeah. save me! Yeah. And the Bible says, and immediately, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jesus reached down and yeah. pulled him out. Yeah. That's because he's nigh to them but upon all that call upon him. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you what, he's a present help in time of need. Amen. Right. Amen. Uh, well, notice here the third way in verse number four, the third way that we can draw upon this living water. And in that day shall you say, number one, praise the Lord. Two, call upon His name. Three, declare His doings among the people. Declare His doings among the people. You know, uh, 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 you and I can have great influence on what we say to other people. You know, I'm sure all of us in here have had somebody tell us at some point in time, you know what, I went to that doctor because of your recommendation, because of your testimony. I started shopping at this particular store because of the savings that you informed me about and the rewards that they have at that store. I started going because you shared that with me. Well, what about Jesus Christ? Amen. He is our everything. And with Him, all things are possible. Have you shared with somebody this past week what great things the Lord had done for you? Have you shared with somebody this week about your salvation? How God saved you? Have you shared with somebody this past week how God provided food for you and your family? Have you shared this past week the protecting and sheltering hand of God? How He's protected you and your family? Have you shared with somebody this past week the things that God has provided you and given you? Amen. Declare! What God's done among the multitude. Yes. Yeah. You know, if we can influence where people go to the doctors, what colleges, hey, it's even gone as far uh, to put relationships together. You know, would you go out with that person over there? Well, I don't know if I'd go with them. No. Oh, yeah, that's a good guy over there. That's a good gal over there. You ought to go out with them. They're a good, godly person. Now, listen, if people will take heed to our words in regard to that, why aren't we telling them about Jesus Christ Amen. and what great things He had done for us? Yes. And so, beloved, we need to declare what God's done and is doing for you and I Amen. with other people. First Chronicles chapter 16, verses 8-11 through 11 tells us, Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon His name, make known His deeds among the people. <laughs> that almost sounds like a parallel portion of Scripture, does it not? Notice here verse number 9. Sing unto Him. Sing psalms unto Him. Talk ye of all His wondrous works. Glory, ye, glory ye in His holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His face continually. Hey, it sounds to me like there's some consistency there. That's what God wants His people to do. Amen. Amen. Psalm chapter 105, verse number 1 tells us, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon His name, make known His deeds among the people. Now, let me tell you something. The reason the church has lost its influence and lost its power is because we quit talking about Jesus Christ. And we have quit declaring His mighty works and His mighty deeds and what He's doing amongst God's people. You know, we're... we're uh, hey, listen... Uh, when, there's a, when there's a church split, when there's a church argument going on, that makes Facebook news, doesn't it? But how many times have you looked on Facebook and somebody's been rejoicing because of answered prayer or what God's doing in their life? Not quite as frequent, is it? And God help us this morning to declare what God's doing for us 
Notice here in verse number 4. Again, in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord, call upon His name, declare His doings among the people. May mention that His name be exalted. You know, when's the last time you exalted the name of Jesus Christ and glorified His name? Amen. Uh, the Bible tells us, uh, uh, let me find it here, Philippians chapter 2, verse number 9, I believe it is. The Word of God tells us, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted Him, this is talking about Jesus Christ now, and given Him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, beloved, I'll tell you what, His name is worthy to be praised and we ought to exalt His name. Amen. You know, uh, when people, uh, 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 you're conversing with people this week, won't you say, well, the Lord's given me this. Jesus Christ has done that for me. Jesus Christ saved me by His wonderful, marvelous grace. And He'll do it for you as well. And exalt His name. Amen. And by the way, it's the only name yeah. that a man can be saved by or an individual can be saved by. Acts chapter 4, verse number 12 tells us, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Yeah. Hey, listen, if you're calling upon any other name besides the name of Jesus Christ for salvation, you're crying out in vain. Yeah. You better cry out to the one that can save you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ. And then notice here, the first part of verse number 5, the fifth thing that we can do to draw wells of living water. Notice here in verse number 5, sing unto the Lord. Now, I know some of y'all sitting there thinking, Preacher, you don't want me to sing. You know, some of y'all have been on to me ever since I've been pastor here for eight years. Preacher, when are you going to sing a solo? Well, whenever we get those new microphones in that Barney Fife used, that's when I'll sing a solo. <laughs> whenever we get somebody to stand back behind here and I can stay in tune with them, I'll get up here and sing a solo. But the fact of the matter is, the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You know, it's not about perfection. It's not about the performance. It's about praising the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. And beloved, one way you can draw from that living water is to sing praise unto His name. Amen. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Not only do we do that amongst others, but to yourself. Have you ever been driving down the road singing, How great thou art? Amen. Walking around the house Humming the old rugged cross. Amen. Walking through the creek kitchen. And you look at her and it's like, oh my goodness. I'm, I, I'm out of Bella Yellow, Anthony. <laughs> and you sit there saying, what a day that will be. <laughs> when by Jesus I shall see. Amen. You know, I sing to myself all the time. I talk to myself all the time. Yes. And I don't care what the psychologists and the psychiatrists yes. say. Yes. Only crazy people do that. Well, I'm crazy for the Lord, then. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Just go ahead and get your straight jacket on me. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but I'm going to keep praising His name and I'm going to keep talking to Him. Amen. Yes. Uh, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. That's one way we draw that living water. I don't know about you, but Isaiah's given us five things here. I don't know about you, but you know what I feel like saying to Isaiah? Give me a refill. Give me a refill. I want another cup. I want to exalt His name. I want to praise His name. I want to tell others about Jesus Christ. Give me a refill. Give me a refill. Hey, that well's never going to run dry. <laughs> Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, Amen. for they shall be filled. Don't worry about it running out. Just go get another refill. Go get another cup. Amen. Amen. And in closing, Colossians chapter 3, verse number 16 tells us, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Where did we get this from? The word of God. That's why it's important to study to show yourself approved unto God. You know, it's why God, God tells us what we need to do as a believer. We just need to adhere to it. Yeah. And we need to obey it. Yeah. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts 
to the Lord. Amen. Give me a refill, preacher. We'll go back here to Isaiah. There's five ways you can get a refill, amen? Amen. And drink of that living water. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for living water amen. this morning. Go, and I tell you what, we can have joy in our hearts. And we can live the victorious Christian life that God wants us to live, but we've got to do it God's way. Amen. Do it the way He teaches us and tells us from the Word of God. Amen. So living water this morning. Get, get, you, get you a refill this morning. Amen. And so this evening when we come in for the evening service, I want to hear you singing. Make it melody in your hearts as unto the Lord. I want to see one of you go and say, Hey, Brother Mark, let me tell you what the Lord did for me this afternoon. He gave me a good three-hour nap. Amen. Brother Billy, God give me a good Big Mac for lunch. I want to praise His name. Amen. And so that living water, get you a refill this morning. Amen. And so at this time, I'd like to invite everybody, if you would, to stand. Please, everyone standing, everyone's heads bowed, everyone's eyes closed. As a musician, make your way to the instrument.